Well, howdy, Pipe Pals. How you doing? Old, holy smoking Pipe Padre. Come back at you. Good evening. Well, I, this is the second attempt at making this video. So, uh, we'll just keep trying. Eventually, we'll su I'll succeed. Hmm. Good Merry Christmas to all of you. Okay. Well, I'm back. And it's uh, the couple of days. It's uh, December 28th. 19, sorry, 2015. And, uh, boy, okay, I was wondering, why is there a circle around my Santa? Not in real life, but it's in the video, anyway. Um, so I'm sitting here, I'm smoking a, um, this is a Dr. Grabo? Anyway, uh, this is, get my Hermininator, Hermininator tamper here. Um, actually, this is a, uh, some kind of a English made pipe. I think the company starts with a D. Um, you know what? I'm going to have to probably use some matches here. Some real matches. 860. Yeah. Because my lighter, I'm noticing, is starting to run out of fluid or fuel. So anyway, I'm um, smoking some Christmas cookie, and this is an amber root, quite a beautiful pipe. And yes, it is a kind of a uh, calabash, very stylized calabash. I'm smoking it kind of in honor and in anticipation of the new Sherlock Holmes episode that's coming out January 1 with Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman, I guess it is, uh, Lester Nygaard. And so, anyway, I uh, am smoking some Christmas cookie, very appropriate to the season. I'm making a video to you. Um, in the background, you're hearing Shona Campbell, Scotland, my home. And it just is so interesting that um, this tape, this is one of my most dearest tapes, and I thought, to be honest with you, I had lost it. I haven't seen this tape in probably 10, 15 years. And I've moved several times and I just assumed that this tape is gone. And, you know, I always loved, this was one of the, my very first, just little delights. Uh, I remember after I got ordained and um, I don't know why, but I, and I can't even remember where I got it. But I knew, I just remember that I just loved this tape. Um, and so the other, uh, this evening, just this evening, today, um, I was looking for some other Christmas things and all of a sudden I came up upon a box and I noticed some tapes, just a few tapes. And most of my real keeper tapes uh, are in another box. This should have been in there and that's why I know it wasn't there because I had as you know, if you watched a couple of my later, earlier videos, I've been going through and trying to organize some of my older audio things and, and uh, record them. Um, so, 
Um, I was really, when I came across, came upon this tape tonight, I was, my heart just kind of danced inside. Because I always loved this little Scottish gal. Don't even know if she makes any more music or anything. Shona Campbell. And that's what's playing in the background. Um, however, what I found, to my delight, uh, along with this, was that this album, I <laughs> can't believe it, uh, was probably made in the 80s sometime. Let's see, there's a, a date. I'm just assuming it was made in the 80s. Um, wow. I think it says 1982. 1982. Anyway, um, so that goes back quite a ways. <laughs> um, and I just thought I'd lost it. And to find it was wonderful. But then, even better, or just as, just as wonderful, is iTunes actually has this album for download. So even if this tape is, after all these years, kind of either deteriorated, corroded, broken, whatever. They had the actual tape, even the same album cover uh, on iTunes. So that's what we're listening to tonight. I always thought her name was Sharon Campbell because I had remembered, you know, trying to go through and say, well, there are certain things that I'm still missing. I even found a very special Dr. Lloyd Ogilvy, Dr. John Lloyd Ogilvy, even though he's a Presbyterian, uh, he was a, he still is. I hope he's still alive. He's a great, great preacher. Um, I mean, if you're trying to emulate uh, any kind of a preaching style, Fulton Sheen and o Lloyd Ogilvy are just, to me, the best preachers ever. Uh, in fact, I actually got to go and hear Dr. Ogilvy preach um, at the Presbyterian Church in Sacramento back in 1994. 1994 or 95 and uh, I wish I had I wish I had met him I mean I wish I had gone up to after one of his wonderful wonderful talks slash sermons but for some reason I just I just didn't do it and um, sometimes maybe that's a maybe that's not such a bad thing because when you when you do have you know I would I guess I would I say hero worship uh, might be a little over the top but it, it was I had a lot of that still do have a lot of admiration for this guy but I don't know if he because I, I used to <laughs> go to his lectures I'd be you know coming from my day as at, at, at a parish and I'd be having my little Roman collar on I should have, maybe I could have taken it off but I just sat in the back and just listened and smiled and he saw me a couple times, and I know he probably wondered, who is that guy? <laughs> anyway, so instead of uh, having a, uh, a forced encounter and having it be rejected, which would have probably devastated me, I said, you know what? I'm going to just enjoy what I hear. And I'm just going to quietly leave after he's done. And I did. But I got the tapes. <laughs> In fact, I think I called, you know, this goes back maybe 10 years, maybe 14 years. I remember calling the church and saying, hey, do you have copies of those Dr. Lloyd Ogilvy uh, uh, talks or lectures? And they said, oh. And then one guy goes, oh, I remember that guy. Yeah, I remember him coming here. She goes, oh, no, we don't have anything like that. I might be the only person in the world that has those talks from 1994. It could be worth something. Anyway, I digress. Well, I'm here tonight. Hmm. In my smoking jacket. With my amber root. Sherlock Holmes. Hmm. My, with my Christmas cookie 
And tonight, I just wanted to talk about something that a lot of people may be interested in. You might even be interested in it. Yes, yes, you. But before, but first, let me get a pull of my coffee here. Mm. I make a, a Christmas coffee every year. In fact, I, I love it so much that I, I have to kind of wing myself off of it because it's a very flavorful spiced coffee. Uh, it doesn't have any sugar in it. By the way, I've got like six or seven days officially into the year. We'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. I have decided I'm throwing down the gauntlet. I really am. And I just feel really positive, even though I've had a lot of challenges. Uh oh, one of my candles went out. Oh, that's good. Oh, a lot of them. Two, three. Okay. Um... But I've, I'm back in ketosis, and even though I got lots of these kinds of little sugary treats, that's right, I managed with that, I'm going to get rid of this little guy, give him maybe to some kid or something, or give it to some elderly person who likes to, you know, chocolate. Anyway, uh, but I was able to go through Christmas, no cake, no pie, and for me, that's a big, big thing because I love cake, pie, you know, all sorts of desserts. I mean, Christmas time to me is, it isn't Christmas really without dessert. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I just had a really, it was a very, it was a very fulfilling two days um, in the parish. And then on top of that, I drove four and a half hours to Carson City, Nevada. And I had a white Christmas. Wonderful. Um, and so uh, then I drove another four and a half hours back home and I got home about 10.30, which wasn't bad. Uh, but anyway, our last service was at uh, 10. And so by 11, 10, I was pretty much on the road. And I was, anyway, so I just had a nice time, wonderful time with some very, very dear friends. And uh, just wonderful food, you know, just, just a great, just wonderful to, you know, be invited somewhere, you know. Uh, usually at the end of the, the Christmas liturgies, I'm pretty much wiped. And, uh, but somehow I got a second wind and I just got invigorated by the fact that I'm gonna take this beautiful drive through these beautiful mountains and forests and hills and canyons and stuff like that. And I just, you know, and there was snow everywhere. It was, oh wow, it was gorgeous. It was just, oh, it was really good for my soul to do that. So anyway, um, but didn't have any sugar at all. Um, I did have a small little tablespoon of mashed potatoes, but I smothered those things with butter and gravy. <laughs> so anyway, and I've even lost a pound. I'm not even trying right now. I mean, I'm just now just kind of just getting into this seriously. But I don't know. I have a really positive feeling that this is going to be the year that I'm really going to, you know, achieve my goals, you know, health-wise. <laughs> uh, don't ask me why. I don't know. I just feel that this is the year. Uh, I think I've learned a lot in the last three years, and I just feel really confident. Not so much that, you know, I have all this ability, but but I think I know what I need to do, and I just, I need to, and I just, and I do it. And the more, it's like, you know, people that <laughs> struggle with things, uh, believe it or not, those are the ones, those are the people. Because and, and the reason why I say is usually with people when they struggle with things, because they, they slip and they they backslide or they quit and they and they just they just get so discouraged. And but believe it or not, if you find yourself being one of those kinds of people, you know, take hope because uh, you're the ones. I should say we're the ones who actually finally succeed. You know, we may fall on our face many many times. But eventually, we succeed. It just happens. All of a sudden, it just clicks. I don't know what happens, but it, it does. And, um, you know, I've been close uh, last, well, this past year because I've been in this new assignment. Um, it didn't quite, I didn't quite go off the rails and I didn't quite, you know, have a real disaster. But I have gained some weight and I need to address that. And I know how to not gain weight. I know how to burn fat 
and I have uh, everything now is in place here where like it was at Good Shepherd. Uh, everything is sustainable and that's that's the most important thing. Things have to be sustainable, you know. Um, for me, if I had to go to a gym, unless it was like right next door, and even that, you know, it's funny, at the other parish, it was next door, and I always felt self-conscious going over to the gym in the middle of the day or any time of the day, because you know, because I felt like people thought I was goofing off and not being, you know, taking, you know, uh, my ministry seriously or something. I felt like I was, you know, indulging in something that maybe other people would feel envious of, and you know, oh, well, does he get to do that? You know, so I, you know, and, and that although that was a, the that was a, like my first year in 2011. I got there in 2009, maybe it was 2010. Yeah, I think it was 2010. I made an attempt. And this is what I want to talk to you guys and gals about, because I know it's kind of a, again, it's kind of a little bit of a thorny issue for a lot of people this time of year. Okay, my Dunhill lighter decided it doesn't want to work anymore, but that's okay. I've got real fire. Uh, I just wanted to say hello to uh, Richard T. Richard T. Richard T. I hope you're doing better, buddy. Okay. You know, it's all those. You know, a guy probably bench presses like you know, 450. You know, and he was probably trying to do it with one hand, and that's why he hurt his shoulder. So, don't do that. Don't do that. It's not. You know, you don't need to do that. Uh, anyway. And uh, so anyway, um, I want to talk to you folks tonight about hmm, something that whether we like it or not, whether we agree or not, it's part of this time of year. You cannot go anywhere without hearing people talk about resolutions. That's right, New Year's resolutions, right here. That's right, we're gonna talk about New Year's resolutions. Have you made any this year? Did you make any last year? Did you keep them last year? Okay, I've heard, you know, yes, I think a lot of people start off, some people, maybe everybody, it's even secretly in their hearts thinking, well, I wish I could do better. Um, Like a lot of us suffer from PAD, you know, pipe acquisition disorder. Um, I don't know. Yeah, let's see. This past year, did I buy any pipes this year? I just love these little songs. They're just, they just delight my heart. They're just like little musical sweeties, you know? I love them. That's what they say in Scotland about little sweet treats. They call them sweeties, right? Little musical sweeties. Um, so what was I going to say about... I got my, I got my, I lost my train of thought there about resolutions. Um, but um, it'll come back to me here in just a second. Just give me a minute. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see if I pick up another train of thought here on resolutions. Yeah, everybody this time of year talks about their resolutions. Now, I mean, some people just detest resolutions. Uh, people, and I've heard lots of people just really, you know, rolling the eyes and groaning and, oh, here we go again. And... And to be honest, you know, um, I've made, uh, okay, I think it really started for me in probably 2010. Yeah, yeah, it was 2010, where I started writing things down. And I think I've even come across some of those uh, earlier uh, resolutions, which I would keep. I would 
write them, write down the things that there was like me. And I tried to focus on like four or five things, which I thought was pretty realistic. It may be a little bit challenging, but I'm, you know, looking at, and a lot of them had to do with weight and exercise and, you know, giving up maybe some things and, you know, so there was a list. And I know 2010 was the year I started doing that. And I wrote it all down and I would date and sign it usually the day before. Sometimes I didn't get around to the writing the actual resolutions uh, until maybe a day or two or a week or two later, you know. But again, what I, what I, what I resolved to do was commit myself and make myself accountable. Um, now, again, a lot of people say, well, I make resolutions and I probably break them later that day or later that week or later that month, you know. I mean, fitness clubs are, are notorious for the, the January, February, you know, rush, all these people coming in to try and lose 50 pounds in the next two weeks. And uh, then I find out that it doesn't quite work that way. I just go so good, so, so good. So it doesn't work that way. They get discouraged and they quit. And maybe they'll come back next year, who knows? So anyway, um, I just, as I reflect back on the last five years, almost six years, right? And as people would say, well, you know, it's kind of a waste of time. Uh, I never complete what I start or I always um, give in and whatever it is, you know. Well, I have to say that I noticed that as I wrote those things down, I was actually surprised, and this is, this is no BS, now, did I keep all of them perfectly? No, I will be honest right up front, no. But there were many of those that I actually did successfully. Uh, one of them was to walk 30 minutes a, every day with the exception of Sundays. Walk 30 minutes a day. Now that doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people, but actually that's a good beginning. So if you're really have been living a sedentary life, And you and you you know you, you really want to resolve to do something realistic that you can do. Resolve just to walk 30 minutes a day. And I did that for I think the year either 2010, 2011. And I was like, okay, I, and I did that. Unfortunately, I think the following year I completely went off that diet and that regime and didn't do very much that next year. But for one year, I actually did walk 30 minutes a day. Um, I also resolved to give up fast food. And I named the, the, the restaurants that I normally would go, Mickey D's, Taco Bell, Burger King, uh, I guess In-N-Out, you know. And I actually went three years before I had fast food. I think I had fast food last year for the first time in three years, almost three and a half years. Now, I don't eat fast food every day like I used to. Uh, I think I had a Big Mac, attack the day after my birthday or on my birthday I can't no it wouldn't have been it would have been like a couple days during my birthday week my head of some time off um you know, I think I've had a taco bell uh, uh, breakdown twice yeah I think it's twice yes in fact I, I had one and then I had one about two three weeks later. Uh, this is all after my birthday on the on, in November, and um, but the the second time I I, I kind of wound up tossing half of it because I just I just couldn't eat. I ate a little bit, but I noticed that that was more of to be honest that was more of kind of that was more emotional eating. I was really kind of stressing out about some stuff, and I kind of stressed out a little bit, and I thought, well, maybe I'll go eat some food. <laughs> But you know, I and I, I was I was a little bit hungry. Not to say I wasn't hungry, but I was. But I didn't eat. You know, again, I just I think it was more of an emotional thing than it was a a, a true hunger thing. Anyway, but um, so 
Anyway, so resolutions, getting back to the resolution part of this whole thing, is when you write these things down, uh, and they, have, they do have to be realistic. Like if you say, well, I want to be a professional football player. Well, yeah, that's probably a noble, pretty cool idea to try to become. And if you have the talent and you have the, you know, the age and the contacts, maybe, maybe, maybe that'll happen for you this year. I don't know. But if you're 59 like I am and I want to be a professional football player, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So you want to have realistic goals. And then you, you want to kind of um, find ways, strategies. Uh, you know, you, I think the thing that I've learned over the last three years of the whole diet and fitness and stuff thing is... If it's going to be successful, it's got to be sustainable. And what I mean by that, I mean that if you're, if you're going, you got to set yourself up for success. You know, if you say you want to run three miles a day, that's great. But if you have to drive, say, five, ten miles to a track every day or the days you want to do it, the odds are you may not have time to do that. You may not be able to do that. But if there is a track right outside your front door and you, all you got to do is put your shoes on and go out the door and do it, your chances of success are a whole lot better. If you, um, you know, when it comes to your diet, if you have a cupboard full of pancake and waffle mix and Doritos and Dr. Peppers, even diet Dr. Peppers, uh, you know, you've got um, Cheetos. <laughs> I actually broke down on my on my week of splurging them for my birthday. I actually had uh, hadn't had those things in probably years. Cheetos, one bag over a course of a couple nights, and I, I was done with that. <laughs> Don't think I'll have a Cheetos addiction. I mean, they're good, but you get to a certain point, and it's like, okay, enough's enough, right? Uh, but you set up yourself for uh, success. And one of the things that I did uh, about two years ago, which I didn't do last year because I was moving and everything, and I finally found the containers, you know, a couple months after I got here, but I know where the containers are. They're right down on my shelf. But I have these, like, little meal containers, you know, and they're enough for, like, one healthy portioned-out meal. And so what I'll do is I'll probably grill up some chicken, bake some chicken, and uh, boil up some broccoli and some maybe other vegetables. And then I'll pack those uh, with, uh, the, and then I'll freeze them. And so every night, uh, all I gotta do is just warm up a meal that's already ready to go. And I did that, that year I really lost a tremendous lot of weight, amount of weight. And I just did all these smart things. Uh, I found, uh, instead of going to a gym, I, I bought a set of power blocks and I started using those in my TSC program. Looking forward to, you know, starting that up again, maybe even tomorrow, as early as tomorrow. Getting a few days head start. For me, uh, a guy who has battled with alcohol, um, one of the greatest gifts I give to myself, I do it every day now and I'm really grateful, but it, when I uh, realized that I couldn't drink anymore, um, and I went through, you know, my first few New Year's without drinking because I went through a lot of New Year's where I got plastered, almost killed myself one time. But the good thing is that I wake up New Year's Day and I just, life is good. Even if I wake up with a cold or the flu, life is still good. Um, and that's the gift I give to myself every year. And then I renew that gift every single day. And uh, it just... I tell you, it's a, it's a real big it's a real big blessing. Uh, one thing I want to say in passing, I've been talking to a lot of people about this. Uh, last year, uh, at this time, actually, it was yeah, it was last year. Uh, I started getting all of the uh, mercury fillings taken out of my teeth. I had quite a few as a kid again because I love sugar. Uh, I had a lot of cavities as a young boy, and uh, you know I got all my own teeth. Those are all mine. They're not fake. Yep, they're all mine. 
Um, and I actually was told by a couple of hygienists early in my life that I was, I was going to have uh, dentures by the time I was 40 because I was kind of irresponsible. And I was. Uh, good Lord has really watched over my, my oral hygiene, I'll tell you that. Anyway, um, so uh, my dentist, Dr. Ed Ziak, and I don't think he'd ever watch these videos. I don't, I don't, I'm sure he wouldn't, but he, he would frown on me for smoking. I know that. By smoking a pipe, that is. But anyway, but he's a wonderful dentist, and uh, he has done some amazing things for my dental health. And, and one of those was last year when he took out all the mercury fillings. And all I can say is that I've been listening to a lot of people on YouTube who are really knowledgeable about health and fitness. Uh, Dr. I think his name is Jeff, or David, David uh, Getoff, David Getoff. And uh, he really sold me, he really convinced me that I needed to get those mercury fillings out of my head as soon as possible. Now, all I can tell you is in the last year, when I look back on it, um, the, the emotions and the, you know, when we have disturbances and turbulence in our lives, you know, sometimes, you know, you know it could just really ping you and, you know, and, and just or send you down to the, the dumps or whatever, you know, and, you know, I, I tended to kind of have these really extremes, you know, really manic, really, really depressed, manic, depressed, you know. Uh, but now I'm kind of noticing more of a, of a, of a curve, more of a, just a gentle curve in that emotional existence. Um, and I've kind of gone through some stressful things even recently. And I noticed that even though I knew I was certainly dist distressed, it, it, it wasn't as bad. And uh, they had said that uh, when you get the mercury taken out of your, because your, your, it's such a toxic thing, that people start to report that a lot of other things in their life start to kind of get better. And one of them is their psychological and emotional life. So I just wanted to share that with you. So in the new year, if you got a mer mercury fillings and you can get them removed, you know, if your insurance will cover it, mine did, um, see if you can get those things out of there because they are toxic and even though we think they're stable, they're, they're, they're technically, well not technically, they're, they're, they're not. Uh, they do leak uh, toxic chemicals, metals in, into your system and your body has really bad reactions to that. Really bad reactions. So anyway, um, it's just something to be aware of. You know, again, uh, some people may take me on for that and say, well, you have no competence to speak about such things. You've never been to dental school and all that. No, I haven't, but I know dentists that have, and they say, you know, you need to get rid of them. Even my dentist, even though he kind of, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he didn't want to, you know, do a big mea culpa. He goes, yeah, it's better you get them out of your mouth as soon as you can. And that's all he said. And we did, and it's done. So I'm grateful for that. But anyway, resolutions. So have you, in your past, have, have you done resolutions and have you are you aware of any that you've kept um, so I find that if you write them down and you have a plan to enact them you can be and will be successful and I have several other instances where I planned on doing something that was kind of a, a, a big thing um, and but with uh, a resolve to work on it, whether it was a daily thing, weekly thing, or a monthly thing, I just kept at it, kept at it, kept at it, and sooner, uh, rather, sooner, a little bit sooner, I was seeing some success and some results, and um, I was able to complete some of these things and and and, and achieve this resolution. So my resolution again this year is to be completely sugar-free for at least a whole year. You know, I've gone uh, several months on the Whole30 diet, and again, that might be something that you might want to start on. Uh, that's where I first learned about elimination diets, and if that is something that might be a benefit and a blessing to you, again, it's not going to hurt you, but, um, you know, you might want to think about that. And there are lots of other ideas out there that are, I think are pretty good. Uh, you know, people talk about juicing. I've done juicing uh, before. I found that a wonderful thing. Uh, fasting, I'm, I've, I'm trying to implement now intermittent fasting again. And, uh, but again, I have all these little 
successes and now I'm going to try to put them more together and, and see where it takes me. But I do know and I am convinced without a doubt that uh, for me, for me, that sugar uh, and highly refined carbohydrates just are just not, I just know they're not good for me. And uh, instead of, you know, indulging and then, you know, going through a, uh, a, um, a withdrawals, you know, carbo, uh, carb flu or whatever you call that. Uh, this year, instead of, you know, eating the, the bad treats, you know, I'll eat, I'll eat the things that I like now, but they're not sugar and they're not high, highly refined carbohydrates. They're, you know, they're basically, you know, and I'm also training my palate to say, well, I actually, I, not only do I like this, but it makes me feel better. That's the thing I'm really cluing in on this year. It makes me feel better four hours later. I'm not going, oh, I feel sick. Oh, I feel tired. Oh, yeah, yuck, what did I eat? I'm just like, hey, I feel really good. And I've had that experience now in little stages, you know, throughout the last two and a half, almost three years now. It'll be three years in February. But anyway, so I'm looking forward to kind of putting a lot of this stuff together and I'm reason, reasonably success, uh, feeling that I'll be successful in obtaining my, my goal, which is to be under 170, you know, probably 160 to 165 uh, at the end of this next year. So this is kind of an, an accountability video for me to see, you know, where I go and where I am today, December 28th, uh, 2015, and see where I'm at maybe January 28th, um, 2016. You know, Lord willing, in the Creek Dole Rites. So that's what I'm hoping to do. So I'm just wondering, do you uh, make resolutions? Have you kept any in the past? Um, what do you think about resolutions? Are you afraid to make resolutions? Because I think a lot of people are afraid that they'll fail. And uh, I'm thinking if you have realistic resolutions, you plan it out, you're realistic with yourself, you can obtain a lot of things. You can change. You know, we, when we resolve, we're, we're trying to change, make a change for the good, basically. And I think all of us long for uh, a better quality of life, whether it's an emotional life, a spiritual life, a physical life, or all the above. You know, we resolve to, you know, maybe do uh, good things with our lives, experience positive things. Um, and again, I think I think if we set ourselves up for success, uh, we may not obtain it today, you know, but I think if we, if we do that and then we're consistent, you know, it's consistent effort, uh, you, you'll, you'll, you'll surprise yourself. Um, and again, there's a lot of wonderful tools out there. There's a lot of good people out there that you can, you know, you can, you can learn an awful lot. I know I have. I, 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 I know YouTube can be a kind of a, it's, it's just a big, huge, um, I don't know if I want to call it a junkyard, <laughs> but I would just call it just a big, huge uh, uh, maze of all sorts of things. And, but, but if you find some of the really good stuff out there, you can, you can get channeled into some really positive, life-helping uh, videos, people that know what they're talking about, people that are living, uh, they're living proof that it, what they're saying and doing, it works. Uh, they can even help uh, people that are new who are going through those awkward first few weeks and months uh, to say, oh, what am I doing wrong? You know, because sometimes we, we, we start out, this has been my experience, I'll start out and I think, okay, okay, I think I got it, I think I got it. And then maybe four weeks or two months down the road, I go, well, this isn't working or it, it doesn't, I'm not feeling like I think I'm supposed to and I'm having these problems. And, you know, nine times out of 10, you can, you know, if you know what the problem is, uh, you can even maybe even reach out to some of these people and say, hey, what am I doing wrong? And a lot of times people will come back, really helpful people, good people will say, well, maybe you need to look at this or maybe maybe you're doing this wrong or maybe you Maybe you should do, try this idea instead, you know, not to not to bring confusion, but just to kind of hone where you're going, you know, make it a little bit more specific for you. Um, and and the thing that I one of the things I think I've learned is you got to really be patient with yourself. 
I think that's the, that's one of the big secrets. A lot of times people are, because we live in such an instant society, you know, we want everything and we want it now. No, we don't want it now. We wanted it five minutes ago, okay? Um, the old saying is, you know, if you have like 50 pounds to lose, well, it didn't come on overnight. It's not going to go off overnight. Uh, but the, the wonderful thing is that uh, for me was rediscovering that I still had a body that works. Um, 59 years old, I can go out and run if I want to. I can do push-ups and pull-ups. Uh, you know, now 10 years ago I couldn't because I was, you know, you can look at some of my older videos. And so, but, uh, but now I'm really excited about uh, resolving to really, you know, you know, get over the sugar. You know, sugar has been, it has been kind of in some ways a, a little bit of an, a drug or an addiction for me. And I am really, uh, really happy that I am now going to, you know, I think I've, I think I know that, the, I don't want to say I know the secrets, although they're, you know, anybody can learn about it. But I think I know the, the, the way out of it and, um, and, and beating sugar cravings, and just you know, getting myself free of that, and 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 to see what a year without sugar will be like, because I've seen a couple of people. Uh, I knew one guy in Minnesota, and he was a big lumberjack of a guy, big beer belly and everything. And uh, I hadn't seen him in about a year. His name was Jeff. I forgot his last name, but I remember his name was Jeff. And uh, the next time I saw him, he was skinny as a rail. I mean, he was this big, burly, big, he was like a big old bear. And I thought, I looked at him and I, and I said, whoa, Jeff, <laughs> what happened to you? And he says, gave up sugar. Just like simple as I gave up sugar. Uh, I had another friend who uh, did a strict Atkins diet for just about a year. Just got as skinny as a rail. And, uh, you know, and he gave up sugar because you have to give up sugar and high, highly refined carbohydrates because you're, 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 you've got to keep 20, you can't go over 20 grams of carbohydrate a day, you know, uh, especially processed stuff. I guess, you know, you can eat lots of, see, the thing for me is I love the leafy green vegetables. I love broccoli. I love Brussels sprouts. I love cauliflower. I love asparagus. You know, I love cruciferous vegetables. So that's not a problem for you. If you don't, if you don't like those things, yeah, it's like, ooh, got to gag and eat that stuff. I love that stuff, and I know how to make it taste even amazing. Uh, so that's, you know, and then some a little bit of protein. Again, if you're kind of new to all this, you know, and you're wondering what it's all about, you can check out old Butter Bob Briggs. He'll, he'll kind of set you right. Or Stephanie Keto person, she's another uh, wonderful, crazy gal. Uh, she's got the business, let me tell you. And she'll show you the business and give you the business if you want to get into ketosis and uh, lose a lot of fat not not weight uh, we want you want to you really want to gain muscle and uh, you want to you want to lose belly fat what's interesting and again I, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging but I have noticed that um, my my shirts and my jackets they fit tight but they don't fit tight around the middle anymore now that my I have I have gained some I have gained some weight but they it's more in the the, the chest here and it's got to be because of the pull-ups and the push-ups and, and all that stuff that I've, that I've been doing. Um, I don't really think about it that much, but I do know that the jackets fit tighter in the shoulders and in the, in the chest area. The, they aren't, it's no, there's no problem in the tummy, <laughs> which what there used to be. <laughs> used to have a big, big tummy. Um, but anyway, just, just kind of sharing that with you about resolutions. So I wish you a happy and prosperous and healthy and happy and enlightened New Year. And, uh, you know, I just hope that um, if you're uh, going through some difficulties, that, you know, 2016 will certainly be a better year or a year that you're able to resolve uh, maybe some difficulties that you've been having in this past year. You know, we all have good years and bad years, they say. And uh, this year for me wasn't a bad year, but it was a, a difficult year. It was challenging. Um, I, I certainly had have had worse years. I'm not saying, and again, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, 
because uh, I don't want to sound like that. But but I have been I've been challenged, and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Um, so, uh, but we grow from those. We grow from that. That's where we grow, you know. So anyway, I'm hoping that uh, you have a great 2016. Hopefully, we'll still be seeing each other from time to time on these wonderful pipe uh, YouTube uh, videos. And um, just tell me if you are making any resolutions for 2016. See ya. And light up your world. Light up your pipe. Take care now.